Welcome to HVAC Success Secrets Revealed, a show where we interview industry leaders and disruptors, revealing the success secrets to create and unleash the ultimate HVAC business. Now your hosts, Thaddeus and Evan. Welcome back to HVAC Success Secrets Revealed. Today, our old friend stops by, Mr. Tim Harrison. And yes, I do mean old as in we've been friends for a long time and he is actually old. So this is great. Yeah, Thanks for coming uh, on, Tim. Not, not much. Uh, just kind of hanging out and um, here to talk about stuff with you guys and be on the big show and, and um, be on the thing that I voiced for you guys a long time ago. I was going to yeah, say, for those that, uh, that didn't recognize Tim's voice here, he is the voice at the beginning of the show. And uh, part of the deal was he had to come on as a guest in order to do that intro for us. So that's why we brought him on. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds great. And we paid a bottle of whiskey for it. Uh, yeah, it was. So thanks, uh, thanks, Doris, uh, for going and getting that for us. So when he's drinking some of it right now. So anyways. Um, uh, let's get the cheers in because we didn't do that. Yeah, just, no, we're cheers in. Okay. Awesome. There we go. I had too many people messaging me saying, how can I see this show? What's going on? How come it's not there? And it's because Tim isn't good at technology. No, I'm joking. Um, we were BSing and telling stories ahead of time uh, and obviously got a little sidetracked on that. So There we go. So for those uh, of you that do not know Mr. Harrison, Tim is a branding and marketing expert. He's been in the industry for 33 years, spending 27 years in radio and recently has gotten into print marketing running some local magazines in the city that he lives in, which is Regina, Saskatchewan. And yes, that is actually a real place. Um, Regina, the city that rhymes is fun. <laughs> yeah, rhymes is fun. <laughs> Fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's actually in the top, what are you, the, the number one sales rep for that company all time? No. In Canada? No. I don't no? think so. No. I'm somewhere up there, but I have no idea where somewhere I in the am. top five, Tim Harrison. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It, takes a lot. it kind of lowers the bar a little bit, uh, you know. That's fine. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> no, we we, we want to bring Tim on this week to to dive into branding and what that really means for a business, what that means for a local business. And you hear it thrown around a lot about building brand, about building a personal brand. And so we wanted to bring him on to dive into what that actually means and what it's all about. So um, let's start with this. Your career started in radio. Right. And you did something to really separate yourself apart from the crowd uh, by setting up a little wager between <laughs> a certain premier of Alberta yeah. and a famous governor of California when yeah. the... Uh, San Jose Sharks and Calgary Flames were in the Stanley Cup final against each other. Yeah, so was, uh, I wonder if you could share that story because I absolutely love it. I ironically, and it was when I was um, working in Edmonton. Um, so, and this is the one time, and and being a guy from Calgary and and you know a Flames fan and working in Edmonton, I could actually cheer for Calgary um, when they got to the Cup. But it was it was that series that was going on, and so we. Um, we set up um, basically a way where um, the female on our show called as she was calling from the premier's, uh, from Schwarzenegger's office to our premier, to Ralph Klein, um, saying that the that Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted to set up a bet. So um, we didn't think this is going anywhere. Like we talked to their people, our people talked to their people. We thought, okay, well, we'll see what happens. Within minutes, we have a, an appointment set up to do this phone call with the governor uh, and the premier um, and we set up. And all we did uh, is that we get, we did set it up and we got, Ralph Klein on the phone, and basically, he, we used um, a soundboard of Arnold Schwarzenegger movie clips, and so he carried the conversation. The premier carried the conversation because he was talking with Arnold Schwarzenegger and about making a. He made the bet. He came up with everything, and all we used was quotes from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was hitting buttons to have a conversation with him. That was it. And this went on for 11 minutes. <laughs> so we were like, and then we, we didn't got off the phone and we were like, did that really happen? And so we edited it down and, and ran it and might've gotten into trouble for not having permission to do so. But um, 
Actually, you know, it had never actually made it to the air. We couldn't run it because we didn't have permission to do it. It did go online, and people did get a chance to listen to it at that point. But uh, uh, it made the it made uh, front cover of the Edmonton Sun um, that that we had pulled the stunt. It made TSN. It made. Well, didn't didn't uh, Ralph Klein's office leak it out to say that hey, we made this? Yeah, that's with that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and so they leaked it out, even yep. though you guys hadn't had permission to run it yet. <laughs> Right, that's just it. So oh, we were like, man. "What are we doing with this thing? We've got what's we've got solid gold here." But if you don't have permission to run something on the radio, you can't run it on the radio. And so we were trying to, we were wondering what we could do with it. The program director that we had wasn't around at the time when we were like, "Hey, looking for advice." The next thing you know, we wake up and it's in the paper the next morning, and then we get to come clean with this. And then the, the paper the next morning was the fact that it was a hoax. So it was, <laughs> and I have it on a hard drive someplace. And I just oh, have man. it the place out. So Wish it was, you had that, so. Just to, just, just to go through it though, just I'm just hitting quotes from I'll Be Back and you know all these quotes from his, his movies and that's it. And the conversation carried on, 11 minutes, amazing. So, but yeah, well, that was one of the things, uh, just one thing that we did and that's maybe, maybe why I'm not working there anymore, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might have something to do with it. Might have. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, dude. Thanks yeah. so much for sharing that. That was, yeah. uh, I'll never forget the first time you told me that. I was just in absolute <laughs> awe that that would even yeah. happen. I, know. I, I played around with those soundboards when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm a cop, you idiot. Yeah. Uh, e bombs world, I think it was, was the one yeah. I was using. So, yeah, it was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I wonder yeah. if this would work. <laughs> hey, it does. <laughs> just get permission. Oh, man. Uh, so, that is a golden story. That I've yeah. heard that story way too many times to count because I remember you told that to me when you first started uh, in the magazine business. And that's where, where Evan and I also came from, too, was uh, was the magazine business. And I heard that. And then every I would, hey, Tim, Tim, tell, the, tell that story. Tell the story about Ralph Klein and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I heard it all the time. It was just a hilarious story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Same that can be the power of radio sometimes, right? So Yeah. yeah. I remember, actually, it wasn't long ago here – uh, and um, what's his name from uh, TSN was, uh, he's from Saskatchewan. Uh, he was at an event and I was at it. And I remember, I said, hey, remember that time that San Jose Sharks made that bet and you had it on the, he's like, yeah, I said, that's me. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so uh, that was pretty cool. Well, something that's funny because, you know, you said that's me. Um, and this, this is, I mean, this also um, attests to the power of a brand in repetition. I mean, um, like for yourself, I mean, how long have you been off the air now for? May will be eight years. Eight years. So you've yeah. been off the off the air now for eight years and you still get to this day people that when you talk to them on the phone or in person, you're like, oh, aren't you Tim Harrison? Two or whatever your whatever your red just two on Monday, right? Two so Monday. Two uh, on Monday. eight, eight, eight just, years, and, yeah. Uh, and that's what, so, that's what that's what brand does. Brand is something that takes our what we know in short term memory and puts it into your long term memory. And the only way that happens is through repetition, right? That's math flashcards. It's how we teach kids math. It's how we learn sports. You have to repeat, 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 repeat. Um, and so, I mean, I uh, the one guy I was talking to on Monday. In fact, he was like man, when I got off the phone with you, when you set up the call, I'm like, I know that name and I know that voice. And then of course he's Facebook and he's researching. I mean, he's like the guy on the radio that I used to listen to. And there was an event that I was at that he was a part of as well. And so he mentioned that to me on Monday and I just went, you know, I get it like two or three times a week, but it just shows you that I have been on the radio for eight years and all it takes is something, a little bit of a trigger to make it go, Hey, I remember that and all those emotions come back. And that's what a great brand is. Everything that we like, that we use, that we have lives in our subconscious. And it's just an automated response, which means it's top of mind. So all you have to do is see the name, hear the name, see the logo, see something to do with it, even colors and fonts sometimes. And it triggers the emotion of what it is that you like. And so that's that's why building a brand is such an important thing for longevity. For, you know, it's not your, it's not your call to action. It's not your direct response right now. But if you can build a brand, it's going to, um, it's going to help you long term to build value um, for your business, which is, which is a really important thing. Um, and too many businesses and business owners give up on that part of it, because let's face it, we live in, in the world of instant gratification, right? And you want everything now. And so, 
you know, 40% of what you should, what you do should be that call to action stuff. You need to do that. 60% of it should be branding because once the brand kicks in and you start to have what's known as, you know, owning your market or the king of your industry kind of thing, um, you know, you'll get more business naturally that way. It's the, it's the hard part and the lumps you have to take getting to that point and it sucks. But I'll tell you, anybody that I know that's got that's that's taken the time to to build a brand and and head down five, six, seven years of, of doing this, you know, they start to notice when they walk into a room that people go, "Hey, that's the person from that business, right? That's that mm -hmm. business, and I know that business and gets around." Works with word of mouth. There's a whole bunch of things that go along with it. So, um, and it's it's you know, it's such an important thing for, like I said, value too. Um, the, I think the biggest mistake. And this is funny because um, I think it was Arlene Dickinson from Dragon's Den did a seminar just before um, just before Christmas. And, you know, from Dragon's Den, and she said the biggest mistake every business makes is they think everybody knows them. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's kind of like it's that it's the fishbowl effect. Right. And, and I said Facebook should be called fishbowl, your 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 network or whatever, because you live inside your fishbowl. And you see the activity and you see phone calls and you see people and you think, oh, my God, this happened with me in radio. It's like, you know, we would go out as a morning show and be out and people would be like, hey, how's it going? And, you know, they're throwing the guns at you and all that stuff. And you're thinking, man, you start reading your own headlines. Right. And then ratings come out and you haven't moved a bit. And you're like, but it it felt so good because that's in your fishbowl and you're only as big as your market is. And that's the mm -hmm. network that you are in. And so it's always about expanding your network and 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 expanding it in a way that people get to know you a whole lot more. And and never count on the fact that you think that everybody knows you because if that's it, you're not growing, you're dying. So branding a lot of it is expanding the network of people that are familiar with you. So it's such a well, such a good thing to do. That uh, it. Rewind this, by the way, if you're started at, at 830, uh, by the way, to about the 1210 mark, um, that was just so much to unpack there mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of what it is, you know, like you lives in your subconscious, you know, having a, a an equal mix of, of call to action and branding. Now, ideal for a call to action and branding is 40% call to action, 60% brand branding. Um, is there a, a different stage of a business that they should put more into a call to action to start and then grow to getting to that ideal mix of 40, 60? Yeah. The, I think that when you're starting out, I mean, obviously you want people in your door. Like, I mean, you guys have done this. How many times have we ever talked to a business that marketing is not even in there? Was another plan. My wife, when we started the business, our own business, she didn't think about marketing. Marketing. I want to put a nice stone wall up here, and I know she's watching right now. And 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 she even learned after a while that. Hi, Doris. I know, like, you know, spending more money on the inside of our store for that experience when people come in is great. If you got people coming in. But mm -hmm. she soon realized that she said, you know, I wish we had taken a little bit more of our money to go and put it on into into marketing um, and, and letting people know that you exist and creating creating the brand is just creating the good feelings about it because it's top of mind awareness and it's feeling good. That's that's really what branding is. We we all feel good about the things that we use and buy. And so you you've got to work on creating those emotions and that's part of the brand. But, yeah, I, I'd say as, as a new business. You know, you should start with um, things and you're going to start with um, you're going to start with the, the cheapest things you can possibly do. Um, but word of mouth and working on word of mouth and, and, and creating more word of mouth is such a, a huge part. It's also a huge part of brand, too. I mean, people when you talk about word of mouth and everybody always thinks about here's another here's another thing we only always think about is right now and who's looking for us right now. Right. And that's active word of mouth. So, and I'll use an example and you guys all played sports, right? So um, when you went on travel tournaments or whatever um, as, as athletes and, and me as a parent, when I was coaching my kids and I did sports as well, I played, you know, um, when you're at a tournament with your parents and all this stuff, where do they end up at night in a hotel room, socializing with other parents and conversations come up. So let's say somebody, somebody raves about something that they did. They just turned their backyard into a giant oasis and spent a hundred thousand dollars and they love it. And somebody mentioned that, Oh my God. And somebody in that room is saying, Oh man, we're thinking about doing that. Who did you use? Right. And right away they're writing it down because actively they are looking, but there's 15 other couples in there going, you yeah, know, we're not worried. 
we're not even so whatever they said doesn't make sense but if you can stay in front of that person now if that they mention that your name and you're somewhere out there and somebody can recognize it and go hey i know that name from someplace right or um and or they've seen it next time they see it they go that's the person that was talk they were talking about this business and you can keep top of mind with them What's going to happen is that now you have passive word of mouth. So every time I see that person's ad, I'm going to remind it of the exact people who talked about it in, the, in that exact moment. And somewhere down the road, it can be two months or it could be five months, it could be 10 months, two years, five years, whatever. And somebody mentions, and let's say it's the, the landscaping, that I, they want to turn their backyard into an oasis. And I remember exactly who talked about it and that you kept top of mind. So I can actually say and give that word of mouth. Now, I mention that to these people and I say, we have friends that did this. This is who they used. So then they look into it, they go to the website, they check it out, and they call that business. And what do they say? Our friends use or said they used or have friends that used you. And so that's why we're calling. They don't hear anything about why that ad kept them top of mind, why their advertising out there and their branding or their call to action kept them out there. And so it's such an important thing that word of mouth we don't we don't think about passive word of mouth enough that mm. um, to keeping top of mind so somewhere can somebody can talk i can't talk about you if i don't know you exist sometimes i can't even talk about you if you're only hiding online exclusively right there's got to be a way to to have a balance between um you know your digital your traditional and there's a, all the big businesses did this they you know they all we all love traditional to go to digital because it was so much cheaper but they all find they had to come back for that very reason for engagement to those things to help drive your digital because that's where everybody makes decisions 95 percent, right you guys would know this are made online somehow but you got to get them there right yep yeah and it's driving the traffic and having an omnipresent approach right and that's one of those things that um, you know, I've always chatted about, um, you know, and I'm a big believer on is that you you, you have to have your digital game on lockdown um, to be able to capture the branding part of those things, because people are going to hear, uh, you know, a jingle or and we have a good question coming up from Herman um, that I'm going to throw up onto the screen. But, you know, when you when you when you think about that, if people hear your name or they hear jingle or hear their brand or they see you somewhere um, and then they you know they say, well, what was that company? Maybe I'm going to go look them up. But if your website's garbage and it's shit and it doesn't convert, well, they're going to be turned off right uh, on that. But just having that omnipresent approach with everything that uh, a person does. so. The Evan, you want to handle the question from Herman? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, question from our guest and our audience. Uh, uh -huh. Melt from Victoria, British Columbia, who is the owner of a franchise, a trim light franchise out there, asks When branding, what is your opinion, Tim, that works best? I.e., learning from a jingle, learning a jingle from radio, seeing an ad in magazines, seeing online ads or online videos, door knockers, etc. And he goes on to talk about his franchise that he's starting and wanted to get your thoughts. And then he followed up with this question as well. What triggers the strongest branding memory for long term or what combination of the sorts? Yes, all of those. <laughs> That's another thing that a lot of times when I sit down with people, you get the comparisons, right? Well, this versus this versus this versus this. And I know it comes down to budgets as well. The more you can do, the more angles that I see you from, and this is another thing about where social media is is an angle. It's not the only thing. It's another place to be seen. But if you have, like you said, the omnipresence of, of being out there and a full marketing package, um, you know, one of my probably my smartest marketing clients is a guy that is in, um, he's in a couple of my magazines, but he also does the competing magazine. And he is the Ask the Expert guy on the radio. And he's on the the news, the suppertime news. And he does the stupidest things like the coffee bean. He does buses, he's all over the place. He gives his clientele um, pizza uh, a couple times a year. Hey, here's free pizza, right? You don't think that that starts to, you know, hey, that's great, my, my insurance guy gave me pizza, this is great. Um, and so you don't think they talk about that and you don't think when people see his face someplace else, his, his idea is he's that you never know where the business is coming from, you never know. So you have to have a presence in front of them in, in the, as many ways. Did he start by doing all those things? No, you're a small business, you have to start with what's affordable, but as you grow, you don't switch from one thing to the other, you add more layers to it, it's like an onion. Right. And so just keep adding more layers to your marketing. You'll grow. Your onion grows. Your marketing grows. The business grows. And that's just building that that perception of value. 
right? Because people don't buy your ad, they don't buy your logo, they don't buy your name, they buy value that they feel is attached to your name. And so that's what the brand is all about is, is the value and how, how you convert it from short term to long term. So radio jingles, yes, they, they can be catchy. Um, you know, um, audio obviously uses that way visually, you know, TV uses both. Um, uh, you can do that with online and videos too. Um, whereas print is just, is one thing. The only thing that you get with that, that, that print hat that offers is it sticks around as opposed to that thing that was there and it's gone now. And I can't remember what it was. All right. of it. If, if you're using, here's what it is. If you can use anything in repetition over a long period of time, it's going to work out for you. It's just how much money you can get there. Right. Well, exactly. And like you talked about the, the build a brand value or the, you, you build a brand to convey value. You know, we talk a lot about no like trust, right? Somebody has to know you, like you and trust you. I mean, maybe not necessarily the like part because we've all been anybody in sales is like, well, you know, they get the calls like, yeah, I would have done business with you and I really like you, but um, so they don't necessarily have to like you in order to do business, but they have to trust you um, yeah. in order to be able to have that, that, that there. And that's part of what, a bigger marketing approach does is it builds trust. And so that way when they, if they do hear you on the radio, they do see you on TV, uh, you know, your jingle here, your jingle there, and then they see a Facebook ad pop up or mm -hmm. you, they an ad on Google, they're like, oh, that name, I remember that. I kind of, you know, I feel good about that. So and then they click through, right? And so it's having all these different, as you said, the, those onions, which is great. Um, I, I forgot my next question. I was gonna lead into something great, um, but, well, as per my user, I, I squirreled down again. As <laughs> so so how, how about this then, Tim? Yeah. Let's put it this way. So we've got a new business. Yeah. Um, doesn't have a ton to be starting with, with marketing, but has a little bit. And, they, right. and they're continuing to set aside more. Yeah. How is it that you would suggest they go about starting to build their brand and sales at the same time because they don't have enough to really be doing both. So they've got to kind of utilize something that's going to do both. And maybe it's not a specific tool, but just a thought process that they can go through to identify who it is that they should be in front of and yeah. the best ways to get in front of them. Well, that, and that's, I think that's where it's, it's um, that's where everything's come down to nowadays because as things have changed with the digital world that's come in, um, audiences are scattered, they're diluted, they're all over the place. I remember radio, TV, and the newspaper are only entertainment values at one point. If you were on those, like I remember, it's going to date me a little bit, but I remember like Friday mornings on the radio talking about the Seinfeld episode. <laughs> that was a big thing. Like we talk about Seinfeld at this time because everybody was watching it. Who's watching what now on TV or on streaming and whatever, and it's all over the place, right? So it's almost got to the point where it's really, I'm not saying that, that, casting your net out and the spaghetti marketing or the shotgun marketing isn't effective or radio is not effective. It is. Um, it's just that now it's like for small businesses that are going, I don't have, you know, the, the further you stretch yourself out, the more money, and, and there's two things that drive cost, right? It's frequency and reach. The more people I reach, which is kind of what everybody thinks about, well, then you to get cost down, you've got to go less frequent. So you thin yourself out. Right. So if you can actually figure out who your target market is and figure out a way to get in front of them and, and go into a smaller group, now what happens is you are effectively uh, going to be more saturated in a quality area um, in that in that way. So don't think about, if I was a, a new business starting out, don't think about trying to get as many people as you possibly can right away. You know, Start to think about how I can hit my target market. Um, in a smaller way, because it's not going to cost you as much to be able to do that. I mean, obviously, you know, the digital stuff um, is going to be a whole lot cheaper. Um, and you can find somebody that can help you out and do stuff where you do both in, in a way that's effective in, in cost where you can be, you know, uh, do some traditional in terms of and do some digital again with that. Um, I think you're going to get some different touches and some different views, but and not be able to do it and, and geofence yourself into some places that will help you build uh, to build that name because to to become an industry leader in a giant market where you guys live, never mind where I live because it's about you know a quarter the size of that or maybe a, a, a third or, or, or an eighth, who knows? You know, that takes a lot of money and that takes a lot of time to try to get to become the king of that market. But when you can do it in a smaller area and become a big fish in a small pond, 
you know, I think that's the way that you should really start looking at things. And then as you go in, and too many people think about going way bigger first and then coming in. And, and when you should really think about target and then work your way out as you start to grow and start to put more on the onion, right? Well, and it starts with knowing what your ideal customer is uh, and having that conversation with yourself. And some people are like, everybody, well, no, you have a, a one type. If you could work with one type of a person for the rest of your business's life, what would that one person look like? You know, how old are they? You know, what's their, are they married? Are they, you know, they have kids, they have a house, they have two cars, you know, uh, are they male or are they female sometimes, right? And like, there's so many varying, fa I mean, how much money do they earn? Um, and kind of working that backwards, you can find a lot of different areas. And, and like even on the online world, you can target within all that stuff, right? Uh, yeah. and, and do that. And there are ways that um, you can do it in some of the traditional stuff um, via targeting specific neighborhoods, uh, even with, you know, your different things, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a community magazine or uh, like like we're familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or a direct mail piece or, you know, those or door knockers, right? So there are different ways to be able to do that. But I think the thing that people forget about that is, well, I'm going to do direct mail and say this one neighborhood once and it's going to work. Yeah. No, anything anything you do re requires that repetition frequency, uh, right. you know, especially in the traditional, uh, you know, sense. So somebody's looking, well, I'm going to target that small area or that small neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go after that and work my way out like the onion. Well, you're going to have to continue to hammer that, you know, seven months, nine months, 11 months, 15 months, 18 months even in order to be able to see that form of attraction on there. So that's why it's important to not blow your wad all in one, in one go on like – Two weeks worth of advertising somewhere because it's going to do right. jack shit for you. Um, well, think, think about think about how think about how many business. Sorry, think how many businesses that um, spent five million dollars or six million dollars on a Super Bowl, Super Bowl ad, mm -hmm. um, and nobody never heard of them before. They think this is going to launch their business into infamy, right? So they spend this money. Now it's the Super Bowl. This is the biggest viewed television event of the year. People shush you because the commercials are coming on. Yes. We go to the bathroom and eat during the game. Right, hundred percent. We do that in our household, and I stream the U.S. commercials for a reason. So, oh, absolutely. You know, me too. It's just like, yeah, I want to see these things. And so, and if, if people have spent five million dollars. They're no longer around by Wednesday. We don't remember their name. What do we remember? Tide, Apple, Pepsi, uh, Budweiser, the big names that have sat there, you know, for years, building that familiarity and that brand. You know, and and I look back when you talk about that reaction and that, you know, getting that response. Um, there was a Super Bowl uh, where it was Kia that ran an ad with Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. So here's Kia, the new kids on the block. And everybody goes, well, you know, they're the Kia and they're this. However, they used Steven Tyler to come in as a classic rock artist to give them that, hey, look, there is a guy that's here. And, and it kind of plays that little message there. And they get Steven Tyler, put a helmet on him, and he races around a NASCAR track. Now, you know it's not Steven Tyler, but that's the illusion they have. And he gets out and he talks to the camera, right? So it's like, wow, I remember that ad perfectly fine, but did I go buy a Kia the next day? No, I still don't have a Kia in my driveway. But what they're doing is planting a seed. And that seed is another thing that they plant to campaign, to sway people and their emotion of what you're doing. It's all about campaigning. And so when you're running advertising, it is like a campaign. It's like what a, a politicians do. Um, they campaign. They know they also campaign outside of elections, too. They're always trying to sway people and their emotions to what they believe. And that's what you're doing with your campaigns and your branding is you're constantly campaigning to get people familiar with it. They know. Well, uh, the echo, Evan likely uh, went to go into and respond to a comment somewhere uh, on his Facebook page. And when you do that, um, because we do a lot of multiple things in the back end, we respond to comments, we take notes. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, uh, uh, multitasking in its finest. So that's probably why I forget questions in the middle of the sentence. Um, <laughs> but uh, but when you actually go to respond, it actually pulls up the video and it plays it. So uh, I think last last week I had our live show plus two people talking all in my headset. And I was confused as fuck. So, um, <laughs> but the thing about the Super Bowl, you mentioned like with the, with the big names, uh, that are in there, you know, the the Coca Cola, the Tide, the Budweiser, they they repeat their commercials, or I guess they don't repeat those commercials. They repeat different commercials with their name in the Super Bowl. So you take Budweiser, and this year was an anomaly due to due to you know whatever everything is happening all around everywhere. Um, that not a lot of people put that money into that. They want to utilize that money back to their team and in, in community ventures and initiatives, which is great on them. But they would repeat those commercials. Like, how many times does Budweiser have a Super Bowl commercial? Like, 10. 
prof, yeah. right? So you remember that. Um, and, and it's usually, I only remember the funny commercials. Like this year, <laughs> if you want to know, if you want to see a funny commercial, when life hands you, when life gives you lemons Super Bowl, just type that into Google. You'll see this Bud Light uh, commercial. It's a Bud Light seltzer lemonade. Um, I thought it was Mike's hard lemonade. So there you go. There's a case in point, right? Like I've watched this video probably five to eight times, even after the Super Bowl, and I don't even remember the name, but it is a funny video. So that's uh, a story. <laughs> when you run a really funny ad and people go, "That that was so funny." Oh, who was it for? Yep, I can't remember. Right. <laughs> so have you really done your job? Um, yep. So running it once and, and trying to get that on too. You know, one ad that I remember from Budweiser, and I ran this during a seminar that I. Um, that we had um, with our company and Evan was there and he saw it. This was a Budweiser ad that they ran back when they had all the um, the flooding in Houston and the States and Arizona. And it was them and it was the guy who runs the plant that gets called in the morning and you hear him on the phone and he goes in, he says, I'll be right in. And they stop production of beer and they start filling the cans full of water and it's just Bud water and they go, and Budweiser should be paying us for this, by the way. Um, and and they, they send out water to these areas. And it's one of those things where you go, my God, you know, and it gives you the warm feelies that feel good about it that you see and you go, that's awesome. And the next time you walk into, you know, your liquor store and you're getting something and you see that and it triggers that emotion of these guys help. These guys are giving back first. Yep. It makes you feel better. Well, right. and that's what they did so intelligently around the pandemic this year, where they they put out an announcement, was it three weeks before, four weeks before the Super Bowl, saying we're yeah. not going to be running an ad this year during the Super Bowl. Instead, this is what we're doing with the funds. Right. And then every news network blasted that out all over social. So they, they get adver they actually advertised for Super Bowl. They got so the exact not advertising a Super Bowl, right? That they needed. It's, yeah. It's, they, really it's almost like they got free advertising by doing yeah. goodwill. Uh, yeah. So cool. Uh random question generator. Blah, 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 blah. We need to get we need to get some sound effects for this guy. Uh so what <laughs> what would be we should get you to do a voiceover? The random question generator. Um, we just play it. Um so what would be the most unsettling thing to keep occasionally finding around your house? Remember, Doris is likely watching. So what would be the most unsettling thing to keep occasionally finding around your house? Ah, uh, this question can go so many different ways. Uh, we've been on a we've been on a dirty minded streak today. Um, right. uh, even when we had our master when we had our mastermind earlier, uh, Evan and I were both in the dirty mind stage. So, um, well, probably finding dog poop dog poop with my toes in the dark would be horrible. But I guess I don't know, like uh, around the house, I don't know. That'd be pretty unsettling to be walking well, in the dark and stepping shit. Well, that would be actually the power outage, right? And now you're like, you have not, you can't even, it's not even your fault. Like, okay, I stepped into poop, you didn't turn on the lights, way to go, idiot. But now it's a power field. Now you have no choice, right? So, <laughs> there you or, go. Stepping. how about no more whiskey? How's that? Oh, that would be devastating. That uh, it's happened a few times in this household, mainly on Wednesdays for whatever reason. I um, <laughs> usually at like three thirty uh, yeah. Mountain Standard Time, uh, the whiskey just disappears, and I don't, I can't, I can't figure out why. Uh, right. It's almost like we record the show and drink on it. Um, or there something. you go. Um, <laughs> since we got onto the topic of the pandemic a little bit, um, yeah. <laughs> 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 You'd walk in Jersey. <laughs> Um, uh, there's some inside on? story on that one, so yeah. but anyways, <laughs> that's a hot holiday trip with her. Yeah, oh. love it. Uh, since we got on the topic of the pandemic, and, and Tim, this is a conversation you and I had last year around three types of businesses. So, I wanted yeah. you to share that analogy. But the reason why, like, yes, we're on the other side of it. If you're running a retail business, you're still struggling. That's that's kind of the way it is. If you're in a service business, which yeah. was the people that are listening to this podcast, that's the area that they're in. They're doing yep. extremely well right now. And yep. for the businesses that adjusted quickly when this all happened, they took over market share. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've learned in my short time in business since 2008, um, downturns always happen. There's nothing that you can do to avoid them. They are going to happen again. This is not the last one. And there's probably another one coming in a year, two years, three years. So 
I think this is a great question to and a great point that you can make around that and, and just share those three types of businesses that you see when shit hits the fan. <laughs> well, there are so many businesses that look forward to this opportunity uh, because they know they know this is an opportunity for growth because mm -hmm. there are going to be those are the businesses that are out there. They know it. They wait for it. Um, and as, as when business is great and everybody's advertising, you don't stand out any different. You just have to you do your, your cycle and, and what have you. But so does your competition. It's also it's kind of the same way seasonal businesses, right, that you're a summer based business. And in the winter, you don't advertise. If you actually advertise in the winter, you know, guess what? And you start a branding in the winter. You own the market. Nobody else sees you. So. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It's like the stock market. You buy, you buy low and you sell high is what it is. But you know, those are the businesses there. The the ones you talk about are the pivoters, the ones that, you know, uh, there are people out there and there are businesses that the, the sky is falling. It's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And understandably so, there are businesses like that. But if your mind frame is, oh my, well, nobody's buying, so why would I, why would I keep putting my name out there? It's because they're still looking. And, they're, and especially when everybody was locked down at home, we were turning to whatever we had. Uh, for entertainment value. And so people were still seeing you and you had never had more of a captive audience than you did during during COVID when everybody was at home trying to wait their way through this. So, you know, that's a perfect opportunity for engagement. And so many people think the first thing is to back away. And that's where those businesses are going, thank you, right? So I always, my analogy of this is kind of like, you know, when you go to a music, um, like a, a music, um, outdoor festival kind of thing right and you have the campground let's say it's all tents only right and so you you get in there thursday because it starts on friday and everybody's got their spots and you got there late and whatever and then they announced friday that there's this giant storm coming and you should pack up your tent and leave and so everybody packs up and they go back to the parking lot they put the tents away and they get in their vehicles except for five percent will actually get out bigger tents and go right to the best spots right to get the prime spots and then they set up a tent there's people that are in their vehicles going, hey, wait a minute, I had a pretty good spot. I don't want to lose it. Those are the pivoters. They'll grab their tents and they'll go back out. And the ones who want to wait for the sunny day, they open the window. There's no rain. The storm has passed. I'm going to go back out. Well, sometimes there's not enough room for you in the campground anymore because they brought bigger tents. Some get in, but you're at the worst spot, right? So if you're going to wait for the sun to come out, that's the opportunity that's missed. And then those that's the opportunity that the guys who have the best um, parking spots or camp spots um, they're going to take advantage of that. And so, yeah, it's it's a tough thing uh, because it is money involved, but you have to think in long term, not in short term. Where do you want to be when the sun comes out again? Right. That's a great analogy, by the way. Uh, it is a phenomenal analogy because it, it well, it's practical and it's realistic, right? Like it's, I mean, that actually happened once on a May long weekend with me. It snowed and everybody left and I was too drunk to drive. So I was literally the only one left. I'm like, well, I guess I'm sleeping in my truck because the, the, the person whose tent I was in was like, well, I'm leaving. I'm like, okay. So I literally <laughs> woke up, like I went to bed at whatever time. I woke up the next morning, gorgeous, sunny, an amazing day, uh, but everybody was gone. So um, camp down to yourself though. Camp down to myself. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Um, what do most businesses do wrong when it comes to their marketing and their branding? Uh, well, I think I alluded to this before is they jump, right? They do something, they don't feel it's working. So they stop doing that and they jump to something else. Mm -hmm. And then they do that for a while, then they don't feel it's working and they jump to something else. And again, they're looking for direct response. They're looking for the people saying, hey, I saw or I heard your ad here uh, and that's why I'm calling. And it, it's not that, it's, it's, a, it's a, what people are with branding is, is building a uh, perception of the value of your business. Again, it, the value that's attached to it. And you have to stay with it and, Again, figuring out who your target market is and getting in front of them, staying in front of them, um, and then adding more layers to it. And I think that's that's the biggest thing. <clears throat> and, and, and expecting, you know, it's tough when you look at some of the traditional marketing versus what happens with digital. Digital, you can track, right? You guys, you guys can track everything down to a, to you know uh, 
conversions and all that stuff where and then and the biggest part is that people don't think about traditional advertising they go well, i don't need it i can't i've had people tell me well i can't track it it's like yeah i know you can't track it but at the same time how am i supposed to talk about you when i don't know you exist and you're only hiding online right and that's that's part of i think that's the biggest mistake that a lot of businesses make um and it's just figure out your budget figure out as many things as you can possibly do um in different ways um I don't think going very thin on anything like not don't try to do so many things that you're not you're only this thin you know instead of it figure out the things that you can do and do them well and how many of those things you can do really well so i'm not saying hey i'm going to do 15 different things but i'm only going to do them you know where i appear once in a month on this thing or there that's that's not going to help you either right so pick those things you have within your budget but you can do them well and own them and if you can do more great No, that's uh, patience, right? I mean, oh, it is. It's, it's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing I think is patience. It's just, we, we live in the world of instant gratification. We live in the world yep. of, I don't want to wait to see traditional media, radio, TV. They push out the songs they think you want to hear or the talk or, you know, or TV pushes out the, the shows that they think you want to watch. And here's the schedule that you have to follow. Whereas we can go on Netflix or wherever. And it's like, I want to watch this now. Here's Spotify. I can just listen to what I want to listen to now. Right. Uh, and that's the world we live in. And so that it just doesn't work in terms of building your brand that way. Mm -hmm. Building your value. Value is just a ongoing thing like building muscle or losing weight. Consistency over time. If you stop going to the gym, then you start yeah. losing everything that you've worked for. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take a long time. Same thing. Yeah. I think another thing about value and building value is such an important thing, too, um, that and something to think about down the road for businesses when you build value and i can actually tell you where i live there is an hvac company that built that value and, and before digital was along this was the guy that did everything right like he had billboards he was on the radio and i was there you open the yellow pages and he had the two pages right this guy was a big deal and he built his value in that way and then there was a company that's come across canada and they have um you know they basically went and they had options to go into every market they could start their own uh, HVAC company and start from scratch with the building and everything. They could have bought something that wasn't as, you know, as big and bought out some smaller business if they wanted to uh, for probably a really good price and maybe had a building and some equipment, or they had the option of just buying out this guy that was the big one. And the first two options, guess what? For the next 20 to 25 years, you're spending a ton of marketing trying to sway people and the value to you from them and take away from that. Right. Never mind everybody else that's in there or your option is to buy out this big person so you don't have to compete against them. And now you just compete against everybody else. And and that's happened with this one business. So when you can build value to yourself, you know, um, that's that's such an important thing, too, because this this looks at somewhere down the road where you never know. <laughs> Somebody rings your phone and says, I want to buy you. Uh, we think you're valuable. We don't want to compete against you anymore. And here's the price. And you're like, what? You know? because you've built your value instead of like plugging away, right? Yep. Absolutely. We had a guest on a few weeks ago, uh, Patrick Lang, and that was, I mean, he's a business broker. All he does yeah. is, is HVAC businesses, helps businesses buy and sell. And that's exactly what we talked about was, right. I mean, it's a shortcut, yeah. right? It's expensive, but yeah. it's a shortcut to get into a market and take over the market yeah. share. Yeah. Yep. Well, in, in terms of radio, since you did spend, uh, you know, almost three decades there, yeah. um, when is that a good play for businesses? And is it even still relevant today compared to, uh, you know, doing some type of digital ad or something like that? Like radio is something that you don't hear guys talk about very much anymore. So I'm curious yeah, where, where you I, see I think, it in the market. I, I think that, I mean, cost for one thing, um, and because again we talk about reach versus frequency if you want to do both hey you know you're spending lots of money doing it um i think there is still value to it because if radio is totally uh, if you're doing a branding package on radio it's totally about name repetition uh if i were looking at radio and i was looking for something you know on the radio station that used to be on here um ran just a community uh, profile thing of something that was going on in the community it was sponsored by one business but it ran every hour and so every hour they got a name mentioned before and after Right. And so as the radio and people listen to it now, the problem is, again, when you have people that have um, control of the radio 
right? And they're not, and they're actively listening. And um, I can get into radio and how it all blah blah blah. You know, we punch the radio, the dial, and it goes someplace else because of whatever. But if you have the person that has the radio on in the background all the time, they're not actively listening, but it's still there, and the name repetition will come up, and it'll start to, it starts to ingrain itself from short-term memory into into long-term memory. Um, and this is a little trick in in whatever market you're in. We started doing this. I remember in Calgary in the '90s, but here. Just because, and think about radio when when people listen, and this is how we're trained as listeners over time listening. Songs play, and this is the way it used to be. Songs play, announcer comes on, what's coming next? Commercial, yeah. right? And if you keep doing this to people, you're, you're branding the fact then that they know, oh, announcer's coming up, guess what's coming up? Commercials, guess what they do? They punch they the dial. Right, yeah. exactly. So now how they work it is, and, and this is where the change in the product design has happened, is that the announcers talk between songs, songs will end and go right into a station promo, which goes right into commercials. And a lot of times you don't even realize the commercials are on. And so now you're like into the commercial set and then pretty soon it's over and people haven't even realized because they haven't had the announcer that triggers the fact that this response is coming up. And so that was just a little trick that's happened. So everybody's going to go listen to the radio and go, Hey, that's, that's what they're doing. Right. But that was just a way to stop people from knowing that commercials were coming up and, and punching them out to go to another radio station because again that's advertising it's stopping what you're interested in um and the entertainment that you're getting to speak to you right so um but if you can find that thing that is um that's on the radio that gets you repetition sponsoring something sponsoring the weather every hour you know that's you know getting your name mentioned in that way because that's useful to people they want to know the weather right so um those are things that you can still do on there um, that are really good. The advertising part, the commercial part. I mean, yeah, the way they've got it set up now, if you can get that person that leaves the, like roofers, hey, I mean, the, the radio is somewhere on the ground blasting all day. <laughs> These guys know every business, right? It's getting into their brains the whole time. Those guys are on radio. They could, radio. They could say the commercials word for word. Um, yeah. Yep. yep. Totally. Yeah. So there's, those are, those are, there, there's always something about everything that you go, this is good and there's bad in it. Um, but, you know, um, yeah. Um, but if you can find that thing that just gives you as much name repetition as you can, it doesn't have to be long. You know, 30 second ad, your name at the beginning, blah, 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 your name in the middle, blah, 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 at blah, 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 your name. That's it. That's what we tend to hear. Um, and everything else in is, we, it doesn't really register a lot. It's just the name. Yeah. So, so basically, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that a lot of people don't do it right and they should do it right. And that if anybody that is listening wants to consider doing a radio advertisement, they should reach out to you and you can consult for them. Is that kind of, is that kind of like what the, what the, the, the hidden meaning of that is? Well, let's do, let's do a little promo on that because I do, I do want, um, because we have dropped a lot of nuggets uh, and I know that you're not on to self promote yourself, but we do promote our guests. So um, if you do want to reach out to Tim, you want to have a conversation in terms of a consulting side of things uh, for your marketing, for your branding, for your radio. Heck, even if you want to have him do a voiceover uh, because he's done a bang up job with ours. Um, so you can reach out to him, give him a shout, um, shoot him a text, 306 Five five one six six three zero. He'll be happy to have a conversation uh, with you and talk about some next steps. Next steps. We will also, for those that are listening, in case I said that number too fast, put that in the show notes. Um, that's actually a pet peeve of mine: is that when somebody leaves a voicemail and they're talking along like normal, and then they get to the phone number, like one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck was you just say? Like, why did you speed up when you left me your phone number? Like, slow it down a little bit. This is coming from a talk faster, my talk fast talker <laughs> myself. So, <laughs> who's had uh, with? You? Yeah, yeah. No, actually, just just beer today. So, oh, it's just uh, beer. Just beer. Oh. I didn't feel I'm out of whiskey, so I uh, wanted to go with just some beer. So, <laughs> so yeah, I've been out of. Well. I've been out of whiskey since last Wednesday for whatever reason. I mean, again, that's that Wednesday thing, right? Right. Always gets you. Yeah. yeah. Even though you have a show called Whiskey Wednesday that would prompt you and trigger your brain to go, I need whiskey for Wednesday. Here you are, whiskey yep. this Wednesday. Uh, sometimes I like beer, so uh, I got. Well, and you don't you practice. don't think about it until Wednesday morning, and you're like, oh shit! But then you got work to do before you can yeah. even get to the show. 
<laughs> you know exactly. we're going to be a little squirrely after the show, so yeah. work after the show is not very not too much work after. Yeah. By the way, I forgot to put I forgot to put something up. Is that um, this was when you find empty whiskey bottles around the house often and find that unsettling? <laughs> that was Doris's uh, answer to the random question yeah. generator. By the way, so uh, <laughs> so in uh, <laughs> so I got you back. Don't worry, Doris. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I forgot about that. We kind of we kind of got uh, you know going down a whole bunch of different topics. So, um, you know, as we, you know, start to, to, to wrap things up and, and, you know, by no means, uh, you know, are we, are we finished? We might even have to have you come on, uh, you know, in a future uh, episode um, mm -hmm. on that. Um, you have in like, I know we're talking about branding and I just, I have written out on my notes, the Pepsi story. Um, <laughs> Cause I think it's a hilarious story. And this nice. just goes to the power and the Testament of Brand. So walk us through what the Pepsi story okay. is. First off, if you talk about Pepsi and Coke, um, if you have Amazon uh, Prime, Pepsi versus Coke is a great documentary to watch about branding and about how they, through their history, um, how they brand. They, they never talk about the product. The only one time they ever talked about taste was Pepsi when they were desperate to talk about um, just because they were losing market share, and that's when they brought up the Pepsi taste test. So, but watch Funny that. Thing about that quick. really quick. Hey Tim, oh, I interrupt. Um, and I brought this up weirdly enough, like three times this last week, that ad that they ran inadvertently advertised more for Croak than it did for them. Yeah. Because yes, people were talking about it, but it was free marketing and free branding for Coke. Yeah. Anytime but, you mention a competitor in your ad, you are inadvertently marketing for them. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, that's why you look at Coca-Cola. They, they, you know, it's all lifestyle, right? That's that's their big play. That's their big push. Is they talk lifestyle, 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 lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and that was a big shift in their marketing. And when they made that shift, um, you know, Coke. And, uh, what was the their? You know, a, new, the, new Coke. Something about the break, right? Well, yeah. the new Coke was it just was like business wars. I remember listening to that podcast, uh, yeah. and it had you know Coke versus Pepsi. You talked a lot about that. But like when they started factoring, you know, having a Coke on your on your lunch break or whatever, right? It said coffee. Yeah. It was it was Coke and having a coffee, having yeah. a Coke at coffee instead of a coffee at coffee, right? Yeah. What, what you, um, it's, it's really it's really but, interesting in how they use that and how they use about feeling good about that too. And, and even with that, the new Coke came out, when you talk about brand, you know, because they, they wanted it to taste more like Pepsi because the pep, they were losing in the taste test. And what that did is it brought out all the true Coke fans who revolted and said, you touched my, and they didn't, you know, they came out of the woodwork and they realized, wow, and then they made it. So that's it's a great story that's in that too. So read it. So the Pepsi came story, out like Trump supporters storming the Capitol. Yeah, exactly. So the oh, uh, I had to go political. There we go. <laughs> well, I'm done. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the the Pepsi story. This is really good uh, from our 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 cabin. We have a cottage, and uh, we have really good friends. Uh, lots of really good friends out there. Uh, one in particular who's a giant Pepsi fan, and I was helping him. Uh, he's got like a Pepsi cooler, one of those old ones with the slide tops. And you slide the bottles through. I mean, you might date yourself, but they have that in there. And he's got all kinds of Pepsi paraphernalia. And at one point, um, you know, they had a little dog named Pepsi. So he was obviously a Pepsi fan. You walked in and you could not know that. And so one, uh, this is a few years ago, a number of years ago, obviously. Um, and I was helping him um, board his deck that he has. He's putting a new deck on. And um, uh, it was just us. The ladies were gone someplace else. And then we went for, uh, after all day, went for supper and sat down to have supper. And so here's this guy who's a giant Pepsi fan and he's enfolded into the into the menu and the girl comes along, the waitress, and she's like, hey, can I get you something? And he drove. So I'm like, I'll have a beer because I did work and I deserve it. And so I ordered a beer and, and she's looking at him going, sir, and he's just looking at the menu and he's looked up and said, uh, I'll get a Coke. And then started looking back at the menu. So this is the Pepsi fan who's got Pepsi everything. And out of the top of his brain, when asked, he just said Coke. So like, why does that happen? Again, um, it's it's that whole rum and Coke, Ryan Coke. How many says? How many people say Ryan Pepsi? Well, <laughs> right, rum and Coke. That's how it works. You know, it's a fries and Coke, right? And so they've done a really good job of doing and Coke. Uh, with that and so it was just it was just funny how that brand and that what was really as a fan with all the paraphernalia still recessed into his subconscious in his long-term memory was what blurts out coke just like that too yeah it's a it's, it's, it's kind of a cool story but um it just goes to show you um how to do that how to how, how long it takes to get to that point too right so yep. you repetition, know. repetition 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 yeah. well, and, 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 and then i'm not doing it yeah, another thing, and one of the things I, I did write, I've been kind of thinking about this as well and, and, and how 
um, building value uh, versus, you know, mainstream versus underground, basically, right? When you can build mm -hmm. value, you become mainstream and more people know you, uh, which is great. I mean, everybody, I'm sure you guys have heard of the Rolling Stones, obviously, right? Would you call them mainstream yeah. 60 years? Who, who, yeah. are, who are they? Yeah. Who are those yeah. guys? You know, those guys play, you know, in stadiums and uh, and everybody knows who they are, whatever age it is, because for 60 years they've been pumping out music and they still remain somewhat relevant. They still tour. I mean, that happens. You guys ever heard of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? <laughs> no, can't say I have. Really good band. My daughter and her fiance went to go see them in Portland at a music festival. They actually played me some of the songs and I went, these are good. From the name, I would go, I don't know but I listened to it really great. Now, when the Rolling Stones play a concert, front row seats are 3,000 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the cost of a ticket to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And no offense to these guys are from Australia. And like I said, really good, but I'm sure it's not $3,000. And if I could you know, somehow have connections and say, hey, the Stones are coming to town, I can get them for 1,500 bucks. Now, some people might say, I'm not paying 3,000 bucks. I'm not paying 1,500 bucks. Mick and Keith don't care because those seats will be filled. Now, if I had connections to say, I can get half price tickets to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, you'd be like, okay, um, well, sure. Um, you know, would you go? I don't know. Then I'm going to have drinks. I have a cab at home and I'm going to spend some money and I'd rather just go for a nice supper or something like that because yet you would spend $3,000 on a Rolling Stones concert ticket and still go for supper and still buy drinks on that because it's an event, right? Because they have value mm -hmm. that's attached to it and they can charge that where now King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard have a, you know, a nice underground, very passionate following, but it's not on a mass appeal and they just have to keep doing what they do. And maybe one day they will be at that point as well. But that's the same thing with business. You just have to take it consistently to that point and look at the Rolling Stones over 60 years where they are and the mass appeal that they have versus is something that's a little more underground, right? And they just have to keep doing The Rolling Stones were at that point as well. Different time, but, you know, um, it just goes to show you longevity and, and consistency will take it out and, and make you more mainstream than underground. Wow. Love it. That is, that is a great <laughs> analogy. Like, we're, we're, we're sitting here to sit there and go, we're sitting here. Really yeah. Like, there's, what do you say to that? Because it just, it makes so much sense. Right. And that's and that's like we're, we're, we're almost kind of speechless, which is, I mean, kind of tough to do. But the 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 logic behind it is it makes a lot of sense. When I mean, you look at it as your own business, well, how do you how do you create that perceived value? You know, how do you how do you how do you charge more for an average uh, for your install? How do you charge a higher rate um, on your service calls? Well, you create a higher value of your brand. So people will pay to have that higher value. And you do that by having a great advertising platform and, uh, and strategy that puts you front and center all over the place all the time. And then they create that. And that's how you do that as a business owner. So you could essentially be the Rolling Stones of the HVAC world. Um, don't hold me to that. You might get mad at me because I said Rolling Stones of the HVAC world, but it's in analogy form. So you're okay. Uh, so the, the last question we have here for you, Tim, and it's one of our most favorite questions. And that is, what is one question you wished people would ask you more, but don't? So I will repeat that one more time to buy you a little bit of time. What is one question you wished people would ask you more, but don't? Can I pick up your tab? <laughs> well, I have fuck, done I that you a couple times. So, yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but you were here for the birthday, so I bought you there too. So yeah, no, you that's... know what? Fun fact: I actually picked up your tab when we were in Hawaii and uh, when we went out to lunch, you guys would, re you guys right. refused. Um, you guys refused, but I just went and paid it. Um, so when you guys drove us to go scuba diving and we went out yeah. to that little we restaurant, we had that little barbecue yeah. and it was yeah. delicious and we drank yeah. beers. Um, so uh, I normally, we ask we ask a return question, well, can I pick up your tab? But I mean, I don't think we really have a tab on this one. So we already uh, bought a bottle he's drinking anyways. So yeah, yeah that's, that's true. So we've it's already like, picked up your bottle, tabs. That bottle's long gone. That's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's what it was 
one of the empties that my wife's talking about the empty whiskey bottles that was like <laughs> yeah that's the one from us so yeah. uh yeah. sorry not sorry doris so well <laughs> thank you tim uh for coming on the show uh it was an absolute treat absolute pleasure i know that there's gonna a lot of people should do team replay on this one because we unpacked a lot of info and there's a lot of value dropped in the show uh to what i did there um so a lot of value that we had here in the show uh as a result so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and chat with us um and uh, until next time cheers thanks for having me guys no worries Hey, thanks for watching another episode of HVAC Success Secrets Revealed. Before you go, join our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash HVAC Revealed. That URL one more time, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash HVAC Revealed. Um, the other thing, if you took one nugget, one little golden nugget of information from this show, no matter how big, no matter how small, what we ask is you introduce this show to one person in your contacts list. That's it, that's all we ask. Introduce it to one person in your contacts list so they too can unleash the ultimate HVAC business. Until next time, cheers.